This video will cover the topic variable expressions as inputs of functions. When we have a variable expression as an input to a function, we replace the variable in our function with the variable expression. Let's break it down. We can think of a function like a factory. We take an input such as a number or variable and then we perform some function to it to produce an output. For example, if we had the function h of x equals 2x minus 5, that would be like our factory. If we have some input, such as, for example, 1, that enters our factory, we could write that as h of 1, and then we perform our function on it, which in this case is multiplying by 2 and subtracting 5, which gives us 2 times 1 minus 5. When we simplify this, we're left with an output of negative 3. And so that's how our factory works. We take some input, apply the function to it, and we get our output. However, we don't just have to put in numbers into our factory. We could also pass an expression through our factory, such as, for example, x minus 2. We would write this as h of x minus 2, meaning we're going to pass the expression x minus 2 through our factory, which is the function h. When we do this, we replace x in our original function with x minus 2, which leaves us the expression 2 times x minus 2 minus 5. In this case, to simplify it, we distribute this 2 to both of the terms inside the parentheses, giving us the expression 2x minus 4 minus 5. And then we can combine like terms, which in this case means combining the minus 4 and the minus 5 to give us a final answer of 2x minus 9. And that is the output of our factory. Why is there a variable in our output? Shouldn't it just be a number? Since our input wasn't a number, but instead it was an expression including variables, it's alright for our output to still include variables, since depending on the value of x, our output would have a different value. This idea of plugging in an expression into a function can also work for more complex functions. For example, we could have the function g of x defined as 6x squared minus 7x. If we wanted to find g of x minus 2, it's like taking x minus 2, putting it into our factory, and then everywhere where we see an x in our function, we replace that with x minus 2. So in this case, it becomes 6 times x minus 2 squared minus 7 times x minus 2. When we're simplifying this, we have to remember a few things. First of all, this 7 is going to be distributed to both of the terms inside of our parentheses. And also, before we distribute the 6 into this expression, we need to square it. When we do that, we see that our expression becomes 6 times x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 7x plus 14. If this step wasn't familiar, review squaring a binomial. Now that we've squared our binomial, we can distribute this 6 to each of the terms inside of the parentheses, which gives us 6x squared minus 24x plus 24, and we still have, at the end, minus 7x plus 14. Finally, we can combine like terms. There's only one term with a squared variable, so 6x squared stays the same in the final answer. We see that two terms have a variable raised to the first power, so we can combine those into minus 31x. And then finally, we also see that two of our terms have no variables, so we can combine those into plus 38. This cannot be simplified any further, so that's our final answer. And we see when we plug x minus 2 into our function, our output is 6x squared minus 31x plus 38. So when we have a variable expression as an input to a function, we replace the variable in our function with the variable expression and then simplify. You got it.